Hello and welcome to another CAD clip lesson on Revit structure. Now that we've been through our CAD clips on columns and beams and beam systems, we've started to master some of those awesome tools. Um, I've tried using beam systems to do different things and of course it works really well in creating a girt system or a wall girt system using the beam system tools. So I've just got some props in here. I've got four columns and a couple wide flange sections up at level two. Okay, I've got an elevational view here from that one side showing that there and then if I go up to my level 2 I've got my elevation pointing this way and we want to put some girts in this wall over here and the first thing I'm going to do is create a new reference plane name that reference plane and use that to create the girts. The other thing is when I create this reference plane it's important the direction in which I draw the reference plane. Okay, and this might con uh, clear up some confusion for you in other times when you're using reference planes. Reference planes have a start and an end and they kind of have sides as well or a top and bottom and you'll notice that if you draw your reference plane going in the wrong direction that your girts will come in on the wrong side. So watch how I do this. I'm going to go to my basics tab on my design bar. Create a reference plane. I'm going to go from right to left and this is important otherwise Try going the other direction and see what your result is. So I'm going to go from right to left. I'm going to hit escape. I'm going to click on here and I have to name this reference plane in order to use it further down the line. If you don't name it, you can't pick it on the list. Go into here. I'm going to pick the properties and I'm going to call this GERT system. And then I hit OK. And, I'm, and you'll see that whenever you click on that, it's going to tell you where it is. Now I'm going to go down and look at my elevation from the south side over here and I'm going to go to my modeling tab on my design bar and I'm going to pick beam system. First thing I'm going to do is set my work plane that I created so I'm going to hit my work plane button and go to my pick list and there of course is my GERT system that I named. Hit OK. Now I'm on the right work plane. Now I'm going to go in and check my beam system properties. Okay, I can define the layout style whether I want it to be fixed distance or fixed number, maximum spacing and all these good things we've learned with our beam system lessons. Number of, well maybe I only want to put three in to start, we'll see. Talk to my structural engineer and I'm going to use you know whatever shape, framing shape I have here if we have some Z girts or Z girts created or loaded, any family framing that we have. So I'm going to use an 8 inch C channel as my girt and then I'm going to hit OK. And now I just need to use my lines tool and I'm going to use the rectangle command to define the boundary. Oh, I got the wrong point. No problem. Okay, click. I can then go in and lock this, etc. Normal sketching rules apply here. I might go back and use my, my align tool and align, you know, this to here and lock it, etc. It's up to you. We can use all of our normal editing tools with our, that we've learned with our sketching objects and hit escape and finish the sketch and for the most part we're done okay I can go back to my 3D view there's my GERT system now let's say the GERTs are facing up and you want them to face down no problem okay I'm gonna click on one two three okay then I'm gonna go up to here and pick the properties and say okay let's take the angle and rotate that by 180 degrees flips it around no problem okay we can take individual components and say, okay, no, you are a C10 instead of a, a C8. Okay, so you can individually change the properties. Okay, or you can change them one at a time, or you can hover over the beam system itself and change the properties inside of here and say, oh, okay, I want four instead of three. It's going to add another one in there. Oh, this guy needs to be rotated. Pick on the new one. Go back to here. Change that to be 180 degrees click out and I'm done. Maybe I want to change the boundary of it anytime I can click on the beam system and I can say edit. Okay then I can go back to my elevational view and I can relocate these. We know that how that one and a half inch um, offset works on here from our beam lessons etc. Again editing rules finish the sketch back to my 3D view. Well maybe I want to move it you know horizontally off of off of that face well I can go back to my level 2 I can pick on my re reference plane at either end and I can go in and have a look at it and it says it's four inches and something away 
from the center I can click on here and make that a, an even four inches and it readjusts it okay or I can just pick on my reference plane and use my arrow keys to nudge that okay nudge it around make room for wherever my cladding is someone's told me how many inches or millimeters I need for cladding and I can go in and use normal dimensional constraints to drive that reference plane because the girt system is tied to the reference plane and then I can control that reference plane any way I want and it'll move that girt system back and forth as I please okay you can also take a, a beam system and turn it into a group if you want to go in here and turn it into a group okay and then you'll also notice that down in families under structural beam systems you're gonna have you know you can go in and rename this or do whatever you want with this so you can create that family and reuse it and perhaps cut and paste it from project to project so there's your um, your wall girt system um, using the beam system